Hi guys, let's complete our understanding about protein by learning about its polymer, polypeptide. Now, what if we continue the condensation of many, many, many more amino acids to this dipeptide? Correct, we will form a long chain called polypeptide. It is quite simple to recognize a polypeptide. The backbone is made up of repeating NCC, 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 whereby each of the NCC correspond to one amino acid residue. Now take a look at this polypeptide, polypeptide A. You can pause this video and analyze the diagram before we start answering the questions. Question 1. How many amino acid residues in the polypeptide above? As I have mentioned earlier on, the backbone of a polypeptide is made up of repeating NCC, 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 and each NCC corresponds to each amino acid residue. In polypeptide A, there are five repeating NCCs. One, two, three, four, and five. Question two. Circle and label the amino and carboxyl terminal of polypeptide A. And how many amino and carboxyl group left in the polypeptide? This is the amino group. This is the carboxyl group. Although polypeptide A is made up of five amino acid residues, each with their own carboxyl and amino group, but because of this group are being spent in the formation of peptide bond, there is no other amino and carboxyl group left within the chain. So there is only one amino group left and one carboxyl group left. And both are located at each end of the polypeptide. So that's why we use the term terminals. Question 3. Highlight and label all the peptide bond in the polypeptide above. Please remember that the bond connecting from one NCC to the next NCC is the peptide bond. So these are the bonds. Question 4. Circle and label all the side chains in the polypeptide above. Hopefully you managed to answer the questions correctly. There are three ways of how we can classify a protein or a polypeptide. First, by looking at their level of organization, second, by looking at their structure, and finally, by looking at their composition. Let's have a look at how we can classify proteins or polypeptide based on their level of organization. There are four levels of organization, primary level, secondary level, tertiary level, and quaternary level. For each level, you need to know what are we looking at and what are the bonds involved. For the primary level protein structure, we're looking at the sequence of amino acid in the polypeptide chain. What is the amino acid number 5? What is the amino acid number 6? What is the amino acid number 11? What is the amino acid number 21? And so on and so forth. Since all proteins are made up of sequence of amino acids, all protein will have primary level protein structure. Because for primary level protein structure, we are only interested in the sequence of amino acid in the polypeptide chain. For the secondary level protein structure, the polypeptide chain begin to fall into a repeating pattern of helix called alpha helix, like this or pleated sheets, like this one, called beta-pleated sheets. These foldings arise due to the interaction between the polypeptide backbone, specifically hydrogen bonding. Tertiary-level protein structure is when the polypeptide chain begins to fold, forming a globule structure. This is due to the interaction between the side chains. Imagine this diagram. Without the various interaction between the side chains of different amino acid residue within the polypeptide chain, 
this polypeptide chain wouldn't fold into this structure. However, it will stretch into a long chain with no globular structure. So what are the bonds or interaction that stabilize this protein into this structure? We have hydrogen bond, ionic bond, disulfide bridge, hydrophobic interaction, and van der Waals interaction. It is important for you to remember all of these bonds and interaction. It is very easy to recognize if a protein has tertiary level protein structure or not. If it forms a globular structure, it has tertiary level. And if it doesn't form globules, it does not have tertiary level. Now, quaternary level protein structure refers to the association of more than one polypeptide chain. Like hemoglobin, hemoglobin is made up of four different polypeptide chains. We have two beta chains, we have two alpha chains. Another example is collagen fibril. It is made up from the association of three polypeptide chains. Since both collagen fibril and hemoglobin are made up from the association of more than one polypeptide chain, we could say that both collagen fibril and hemoglobin have quaternary level protein structure. So what are the bonds and interactions that stabilizes this structure? We have hydrogen bond, ionic bond, disulfide bridge, hydrophobic interaction, and van der Waals interaction. It is also very important for you to remember all of the bonds and interaction. Now let's test our understanding. What level is this polypeptide? In this diagram, we are only interested in what is the amino acid at the first position, fifth position, 10th, 15th, 20th, and 25th within the polypeptide chain. Correct, it is a primary level. This is because in the primary level, we are only interested in the sequence of amino acid within the polypeptide chain. How about this one? Correct, it is the secondary structure. To be specific, it is alpha helix structure. What about this one? Correct, it is secondary structure also, specifically beta pleated sheet. It is my intention to show you both diagrams. This is because beta pleated sheet can be represented by both. How about this one? The crow protein of bacteriophage 1 is a dimer, meaning it is made up of two polypeptide chain. Correct, it is quaternary level structure, because quaternary level structure refers to the association of more than one polypeptide chain. Now let's have a look at this protein. What level does this protein have? Does it have primary level? Yes, it does, because every protein have their own amino acid sequence. Does it have secondary level? Yes, it does. Based on the ribbon representation, we could see it is made up of alpha helix structure. Does it have tertiary level? No, it does not have tertiary level. This is because tertiary level only present if the protein begin to fold into a globular structure. As you can see, this protein, which is keratin, does not form globular structure. It forms a fiber. Lastly, does this protein have quaternary level structure? Yes, it does, because this protein, keratin, is made up of the association of more than one polypeptide chain.